In this lecture segment, we consider Impressionism. We'll focus on paintings by Monet, Kayabat, and Morisot, three artists who showed their work at the Impressionist exhibitions. We've been talking about realism at mid-century, and in the 1870s, we shift our story to Impressionism. Paris undergoes a massive overhaul in the Second Empire period, a time of relative stability within the 19th century. After a turbulent series of revolutions, the French government settled down with Napoleon III, who was Napoleon's nephew, elected president as a result of the 1848 revolution, but then had himself elevated to emperor. He hired Baron Haussmann to renovate the city, called the Haussmannization of Paris, transforming a medieval city to a modern metropolis, the city you see today. It's a period of constant construction, with overhauls to the streets, a new sewer system, the creation of parks and green spaces, planting trees along new sidewalks, the addition of gas lights, which allowed folks to go to evening entertainments, and trains and train stations, and the first shopping malls, like the one you see here. Haussmann overhauled how housing worked in Paris. Much of the housing for the poor was destroyed, and they were pushed out of the city to the suburbs. New construction in Paris under Haussmann were five to seven story buildings with shops on the ground floor and then apartments above designed for a range of social classes, which created harmonious, continuous vistas down the new streets, as you see in this view towards the opera, and in the yellow streets on this map. There was prosperity and disposable income, and the burgeoning of a French middle class, the bourgeoisie. These were middle class people who had enough money to provide for their basic needs, and money left over to purchase clothing and home furnishings, but also works of art suited in size to their homes, instead of the huge canvases that we've seen so often in the salon. These individuals were shopping at the new department stores springing up in Paris, and they were walking on the newly dramatically altered streets of the city. Before Haussmann, Paris was a medieval city in many respects, with narrow streets that were easier to barricade than wide boulevards, and the streets of Paris had been barricaded many times in its revolutions. Haussmann had the narrow streets destroyed and converted into grand boulevards, as you see in the two images of the same street in Paris, on the left during renovation and on the right after. Paris became a city of the promenade, a city in which you went out in your fashionable clothes to be seen and to see what everyone else was wearing. A city that in its very structure was about consumption of imagery, consumption of what one could see with their eyes. There were no sidewalks before, and now a new walking culture emerges. It becomes a city that is about seeing and being seen, moving down boulevards towards or away from grand structures, as you see in this 1878 map of the city, littered with monuments and buildings as destinations. And in this photograph, we move, move towards the opera. Impressionism grows out of this context, the city of Paris that changed so much under Haussmannization. Claude Monet was a struggling artist who had little success showing at the salon and had a tough time financially. He passed through a realist phase, and in 1867, he was in the Louvre in Paris, like any good artist, and was supposed to be painting copies of old master works of Titian, Giorgione, Raphael, and Poussin, but instead he paints this view out of the window looking down to the busy city. We see the new buildings of Haussmann with the medieval remnants of Paris, the newly planted trees and the gas lights. He's really interested in showing the urban world in a positive way, showing the bourgeoisie, the respectable people, not the prostitutes as Manet had done. He shows the modern world and the bustle of modern life. After visiting London and hanging out with Whistler and seeing Turner's work, he develops an abiding interest in depicting light and atmosphere, the quality of the air, and how best to use paint to capture it. Monet's Impression Sunrise was shown at the first exhibition of the Anonymous Society of Painters, Sculptors, Engravers, etc. in 1874 at the studio of Nadar, a photographer. The painting was reviewed by a critic who used the term impression in a denigrating way, entitling his review the exhibition of the Impressionists. He commented that wallpaper in its embryonic state is more finished than that seascape, referring to the painting you see here. We see characteristics of Impressionism, the broken brushstroke, the free application of paint, the breaking up of form into color, paint being used to evoke objects, not to transcribe them, and the reliance on the eyeballs of the viewer to mix the colors. Monet used complementary colors, orange and blue here, to produce the scintillating effect 
of sunrise on the water with the reflection of the morning sun on the choppy water, reflecting his knowledge of the growing science of color and recent publications about color and vision. Critics and academicians read this as an oil sketched, an unfinished painting, a first draft, not a completed work. Monet and around 10 other artists showed works of art at Impressionist exhibitions from 1874 to 1886, following in Courbet and Manet's footsteps to take their art directly to the people they hoped would buy it. They had submitted regularly to the salon and been rejected over and over. This loose group of artists were interested in not just landscapes, but especially depictions of people at leisure and city life in Paris after house minimization. Calling themselves the independents initially, they upended academic rules of painting by calling a sketchy work finished, and often chose not to capture a frozen static scene, but rather to use painting to affix the transitory and the constantly changing environment. But there's lots of diversity among these artists in how they approach painting. Many painted on site out of doors or on plein air, while others sketched on site and then painted in studio. Their exhibitions were organized alphabetically by artist's name and shown in two lines at eye level instead of the salon style floor to ceiling display. In addition to including those who exhibited at the Impressionist exhibitions within the category of Impressionism, scholars often include Manet and other artists who had an interest in showing lives of the upper middle class in Paris, often wanting to capture what the eye sees. Monet's take on an Impressionist landscape is probably the type of Impressionism you are most familiar with. Historically, artists might sketch a landscape on site, but then would compose the finished painting in the studio. Monet altered this pattern and stressed the importance of painting landscapes on plein air to best capture the true effects of atmosphere and light, made possible in part by the invention of paint in tubes. He does many series of painting that show changing light and atmosphere that he attempted to capture in paint. He paints this work in the train shed at the Saint Lazare train station in Paris. He was living in the suburbs at the time and would have taken the train into the city almost every day. So he's painting his commuter route, his stomping ground. He made 12 views of this spot, each one a bit different, perhaps reflecting the changes in vision that came as a result of photography, that they seem reproducible, the same subject from different angles, like you could put them together and make a flip book of the site, watching the elements in the scene move. This is a really modern subject. The train shed was made of glass and steel, a new form of construction made possible via new technology. The train also relates to the type of seeing he was interested in capturing, a fleeting moment fixed in paint, like you're in a car or a train watching the city or landscape blur by, and he fixes that transitory moment in his art, capturing an impression. The light and atmosphere are constantly changing in this steaming environment as he captures the effect of the smoke billowing up out of the train and dematerializing its form. You can see in this detail that as you get closer to the painting, the form dissolves into just color, and as you move away, it becomes more solid. You can also see that Monet works with a loaded brush, producing a surface of thick paint that creates a scintillating character. He's interested in light, color, atmosphere, in capturing a moment on site, not in studio, and he's interested in modern urban subjects. There's significant diversity among the artists who exhibit at the Impressionist exhibitions. Gustav Kayabat was independently wealthy, and his collection of art forms the core of the Musée d'Orsay in Paris today, and he helped finance the Impressionist exhibitions. He also painted similar subjects as the other Impressionists, but he used a different working method. One review of the 1877 Impressionist exhibition stated that, Kayabat is an Impressionist in name only. He knows how to draw and paints more seriously than his friends. And by this, the critic meant that he painted in studio and his finished works were not produced on site as the atmosphere changed, capturing impressions, but rather were composed over a long period closer to the academic process Monet and others rejected. In this large painting, we see one of these complex intersections Haussmann had designed near the train station where Monet painted. His family owned property in this neighborhood, so these were his stomping grounds, and Manet's studio is just around the corner. He shows us a view of modern houseman-sized Paris. We have Houseman's new housing, sidewalks, gas lights, and fashionable, respectable people moving through this walkable city, part of the new walking culture. It's a rainy day, which makes for shiny surfaces on the cobbles, chewy, thick air. 
It's a carefully planned image of arrested motion. These two figures are moving forward, but looking that way, as they are about to bump into the, this figure moving towards them. So it's a bit deceptive. It feels like a frozen moment. The moment has been choreographed, planned using sketches that may have started on site with a quick dash off, but is a painting created in studio. The painting is much more solid than Monet's production. It's more linearly painted without the telltale impressionist brushstroke throughout. It's ordered and has a pretty complex perspectival construction. It has an academic feel. If we compare it to David and Monet, we see that oddly it has elements of each. The large size of the work, the arrested motion and crafted surface of the painting, and careful planning through drawing, and the interest and perspective are more similar to David. The modern subject and interest in light and atmosphere and the similar palette are more like Monet. Both the Kayabat and the Monet were shown at the 1877 Impressionist exhibition, two different approaches in Impressionism to showing modern life in Paris. The last Impressionist artist we are covering is Berthe Morisot, who was a founding member of the Society. The structure, organization, and hanging of the Impressionist exhibitions, remember they are alphabetical, afforded women, the artists, the opportunity to be included as part of the public discourse about art during this period, as well as allowing them to play a key role in the trajectory of art and modernism during the 19th century. Women artists in 19th century Paris were not allowed to join the French Academy, so they looked for training elsewhere from local masters. Morisot came from an upper middle class family, so she did not need a profession, but she chose one. Her mother secured art lessons for her and her sister, and they began showing works in the salon. Her family got to know Manet's family, and she modeled for him in many portraits. She showed her work in galleries, but was getting rebuffed by the salon, and in 1874 made her last attempt, was refused, and switched her focus to organizing and working for the success of the Impressionist exhibitions. A few months after the Impressionist exhibition in 1874, she married Manet's brother, but kept painting under her maiden name. She specialized in the depiction of the lives of upper middle class women, showing their social activities, their children, their time at concerts and fancy evening clothes, and the time spent in parks, as you see here. She may have chosen these subjects because it was what, what was familiar to her, but it was also what was available to her. Her class and gender precluded her even accessing other subjects like races, bars, or the activities of men. She depicts the modern woman, the stylish Parisienne, about her leisureful life. She created a niche market for her works. Her letters reveal that she wanted to sell her art, and she pivoted from landscapes to showing views of women's lives that sold. She shows us a view of women at a popular park for the upper crust. They are on a boat, on the water, fashionably dressed with all the accessories stylish bourgeois women were to have. Hats, parasols, gloves. We see the painterly brushstroke, the bro broken brushstroke that appears so often in Impressionism, the hand of the artist revealed throughout. The high horizon line and compression of space and an interest in showing the movement of the water and its scintillating quality using the application of color. Morisot boldly signed this work across the edge of the boat. As we've seen so many times in this course, she used her art to craft an identity for herself as a creator and a shrewd artist who made what would sell. In Impressionism, we see artists turning to the subject of Paris and especially the activities of the upper middle class. These artists, many of whom exhibited together, show an interest in using paint to capture the changing light and atmosphere and the transitory nature of urban life.